Welcome back to some professional StarCraft II asterisk. Yes, you may not recognize what's on the screen. It may look suspiciously similar to something you think you've seen, but it's entirely different. We'll get into it after introducing our two Ukrainian players in this Scion fourth race challenge match. First, better known as a caster, um, but also a Grandmaster random player, fun fact. It is Alex in the top right playing Chiron. We'll get into that momentarily. But on the other side, the challenger just playing your normal, uh, it's just Zerg. It's just normal Zerg. The entire point here is to show how it fares against your average, well, I guess he's not your average player. He's one of the more uh, creative and exciting ones. But of course, it's Bly. And who better to stress test? Uh, one, of, one of the... There are a lot of fourth race hybrid uh, sort of mods out there. But this is possibly the most polished I've ever seen. I know other... YouTubers and streamers have found it in the past. The thing is, it feels like you're playing StarCraft. All the, or many of the assets are apparently entirely unique. That's why it has that StarCraft look, but it's not quite what you're expecting. Uh, the sounds are really cool. The mechanics are similar but different. So let me run down Chiron. I played a little bit. We got a couple matches here, but before we get into the action, and we can get into the action quite quickly, the way Chiron works, you don't have supply depots. You might already notice some crazy things happening. You warp in units in a power field around your citadel, which is the uh, main command center area. You warp in units once you have your production facilities. Uh, but the production facilities work kind of like hatcheries. Uh, the edifice, which is your closest gateway equivalent, allows you to warp in your basic uh, frogs and mini lots or... Uh, vaults and pariahs is he did he build a reliquary on the other side the equivalent of cyber core blocking yes chiron warps in units they have to warp in around their citadel um you can't actually see it. i think it's a graphical thing but there is a large power field around the citadel to warp in units of all types all levels of tech there are equivalents for everything there's there's heavier hitting ground units spell casters air units but overall i would say Everything produces kind of like like Terran. You have to sit there and build a building like Terran here, you see. But with a range, kind of weirdly, uh, a bit more like Protoss. And it definitely has a Protoss look to it. But it actually plays out uh, somewhat differently, especially with the kind of banked up warp mechanics. It, it feels a little more like playing Zerg because you warp in rounds of units at a time. So we'll have to see. Ah, yes, the laser crab in the wall off here from Alex. I can't hear any of the beautiful sounds, Jimmy. I don't know if that's... Can we hear them from... Oh, yeah. from If we go to Alex's camera, we can actually see that Citadel power field. He's watching. And he overloads. He's got the vaults, which are your basic anti-air. Bly on the other side, I mean, he's probably going to take the initiative. The Citadel was upgraded, which is like a light chrono boost around everything here. And what kind of tech are we adding on? He's already got the Conduit, your Stargate equivalent. Uh, he's got an Echo, which doesn't attack. I lied. Apparently it does have an attack. Uh, it just does mostly emotional damage. But eventually, it <laughs> doesn't attack. Kills an overlord. Well, all right. It just attacked it with harsh words. The echoes of harsh words. I legitimately didn't realize. Because it can siege up and become a, a detector unit. We got plus one Chiron shields. Is that what it's called? I believe so. On the way. Already a sanctum done, which allowed the, the creation of that laser crab. The Pulsar, sorry. Empyrean being produced, as well as another Empyrean. So this will allow more charges of whatever he wants to warp in. And, and what do we have next? Another edifice. So more of those basic units. What does Bly have on the other side? What is the boring Zerg doing? 
He's building queens. He's decided not to get too crazy. He's actually going over 50 drones, which is, um... It's like a spotting a unicorn here. There is speed for edifice units on the way. Can we get can we get these tool tips, Jimmy? I would I would love to actually see the names. Apparently that didn't fix it. Oh, there we go. Modified gate. We all wanted to modify our gate in the past, um, but only Volts and Pariahs are going to be the beneficiaries of it. So yeah, much like Zerg buildings, the upgrades are just on the tech buildings, and then the warp ins are done uh, near the citadels. Yeah, these. Oh, it's in the air. Another really cool thing is how some of the some of the buildings are air buildings, including turrets. Some of them, which means you can just build or or walk underneath them, which is something I never knew I was missing from StarCraft Two, until I saw it here. Like. It's actually, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, why would you put your air turret on the ground when you could put it in the air? Like, Protoss never figured this out. The Chiron have been on top of this for a while. And down goes an Overseer. Meanwhile, oh, Harbingers to kick things off. I do believe they have a ground attack. What is in production over here? Adding some nullifiers, which are the mini cannons. Ah, this one's universal. That pulsar in the way, using the, um, what is it called? The zealots have like a, a mini adept shade they can use. But some of them obviously are underachievers here. And Bly has just a bunch of roaches coming across. The harbingers blasting away at the queens. Ah. And they don't... Well, they have a pretty decent amount of HP, but must retreat from even more queens. Meanwhile, the Roach is just busting through a couple of Harbingers and Nullifiers. Not going to be enough to stop this. Well, adding the... the um, generator that... Uh, is that what it's called? The generator? The charge up on the Citadel, which increases the movement speed of these units. And might have some other buffs as well. Overall, the Roaches get stuffed here. But at the end of the day... Bly not taking too much at home. The shields are regenning. Kind of crazy. The shields are, are team colored. Well, doing pretty well and very microable. Very interesting. Oh, but the Queen uh, Arbingers, there is no recall. So once those get in a, a rough situation, they're going to have a tough time. Oh, the, the Super Cruiser. What do we got? What, I forget what that one's called. A Zenith, I believe. Oh, a Paragon being built. The Paragon is the cruiser. The Zenith is the building. It also has an orb. It can shoot at things that does a bunch of damage with Splash. So like Yamato Cannon, you thought would be. I, th I think there's still a ton of newer players who think Yamato Cannon does Splash damage. It doesn't. Uh, it does look like it should. Should be an upgrade or something, right? Oh my god, that movement animation is so cool. Ah, uh, it's got some little fancy spin drives there. Oh, uses the generator as well. Oh, does it? It actually sticks the upgrade on it for a little bit. We've got okay. What do we got here? We got pariah shields. Those basic. So even though they look like zealots, they only have thirty-five, forty-five. So they have like double, it's closer to a marine in HP. Maybe a little more, especially with the extra shield. A lot of damage being done. The Hydra is just gunning everything down, but the air fleet, and with enough underneath, the, the Hydra is starting to burn through. Is there enough for a super orb? He's not using it yet. The Paragon and Harbinger is doing plenty of damage. 15 more Hydras on the way. Not enough to deal with this. A Viper as well. Groove Spine's not done for Bly, which is, uh, feels like a bit of an oversight for someone who's had Hydras for this long. Meanwhile at home, yes, the generator or the uh, Citadel ability does increase the mining speed, or at least the movement speed of workers as well. So it is a mild eco boost. I love the look of, I mean, it looks so cool. Chiron Biological Armor. Completed. I love how it even has its own icon here in the uh, observer interface. Incredibly polished. 
Well, Bly is sitting on 65 drones, which is, once again, a huge amount for him. Those paradoxes, I believe, are detectors, or at least the echo. There should be an echo with them. Taken out. Well, here comes Bly with your typical anti-air Zerg army. Some... Oh, stasis fields. They can still attack, but they just can't move. But Parasitic Bomb doing terrible, terrible damage. Empyrean Orb. Connects, but immediately healed on everything but the queen that got obliterated. Pariahs coming in towards the third. Shade to the front. The drones, some of them caught, but most of them will be able to escape. They don't do nearly as much damage as your average zealot. They try to dash right out, and they will. But Bly overall able to stop the army as there just didn't seem to really be enough splash damage from the Chiron. Just a standard Hydra Viper army so far doing quite well. Ricky, the accidental swarm host, was hanging out. I'm not sure how long he's been there, but dead now. Several Paragons. Their orbs could add a whole lot of extra damage. There's no feedback or anything for Zerg, so... They will be able to cast them. The question is, it's kind of like a Seeker missile of old. Where you can dodge it, but it's it's going to hit something, very likely. So, I'm not sure if you can actually dodge it with Burrow. That would be interesting. Mechanical weapons. There is a split in upgrades uh, between the, the edifice units and the mechanical units, like the air and heavier ground units for Chiron, much like uh, bio and mech for, for Terran. Pariah is trying to catch the Zerglings, but Zerglings still pretty quick. Bly moving around. Plus three, plus three on the way for Alex, but only plus two, plus one for Bly. Oh, corrosive Blyles coming out. Banelings also. Oh, Banelings could be quite good against the Pariahs. Only like two or three. It'll be like the trailer finally. You know in the trailer when a Zealot takes three Bane hits? These Zealots, I think, only take three Bane hits, so. In, in real gaming, it's like five, at least. Depending on upgrades, I guess a little, but. <laughs> slapping away. Oh, Shades. Into the third, into the main, drags Bly's army back. Small lane counterattack, looking for an opportunity. A whole lot of banelings on the way. Maxed out armies, pariahs into the third. In the main, cleaned up. They're just not that sturdy of a unit. They're easily cleaned up, much like Zerglings. But here comes the army from Alex, the fleet. The Chirons have mustered everything here. But will they be able to catch up in supply? Alex lost a lot of the pariahs, and now he's going to lose a lot of his workers. If the Bane li Well, the nullifiers are doing pretty well. It is a bit awkward. The army is completely out of position. Bly is moving forward into the fourth. 63 to 72 workers. A handful of turrets are not going to be enough here. Alex just caught out. Bly going to move forward. The Harbingers move pretty fast, but so fast that they might be ahead of everything. Uses some of the stasis fields, but they're taken down immediately. Paragon's looking for damage. Where are the orbs? Firing out a volley. Retreating. Looking for more. It looks big, but it's not enough damage to stop the critical mass. Another orb coming through. That's a big one on the Hydras. But the fungal and corrosive bio combo. Oh, just undercutting the strength. It looks like just barely... Whoa. <laughs> they're so slow. The acceleration, they, they got a lot of junk in the trunk, all right? I will say, carrying those orbs around, they take a bit to get going. And that means if you aim for uh, the sensor and they're not moving, it looks like the biles will actually hit. So you got to keep those moving. Bly surprisingly even here, but the problem is Alex lost a lot of his economy. I'm not sure if the Chiron can recover from that as he's been... He's been relying on very relatively expensive units. I don't know the exact cost, but they're comparable to what they seem like uh, for capital ships and larger units in SC2. And right now, like, Alex has to sit back, play defensive, blind, not pressing the issue. He knows he has the economy. He lost all his spellcasters that helped, helped him win that fight. The Hydras trying to chase down at the Pariah's dash away. 
It's always been weird to me that adepts like can be in two places at once. Uh, the the pariahs take a more direct approach in just turning into the shade for a moment. A big round of pariah warpins. They only cost 50 minerals, by the way. Volts and pariahs, those basic, very basic units, only 50 minerals. So they are as cheap as zerglings. But Bly has remustered. We'll have to see how many, how much splash damage is there, because a critical mass of hydras is still a lot to deal with. The harbingers don't trade that well, it seems. There needs to be something in front. The harbingers are more of a void ray style unit. Trying to take advantage of whatever cover they can. The pariahs jump into the fray. Corrosive Blyles looking for more. Empyrean Orb. He dodges easily. It doesn't even kill the Hydra because he went out of vision. So you can dodge like that. Cool to know. Alex will drag back. He, he's got a lot slapping down a hatchery. Oh, maybe dash the wrong direction there. More, more slappery on the hatchery. It takes a lot, but they get the job done. It really does truly look like an alternate universe Protoss. Like, it's different, but it, it looks so similar. Meanwhile, more pariahs on the left side. Zerglings everywhere, and, and here comes Alex in the center. He might be able to dictate this fight. Meanwhile, Zergling's dealing with the Pariahs. The Stasis Field's actually zoning out. Can he Wabo Combo with the orbs? He fires off one. They're stuck. They can't run. The Harbingers, though, having a tough time trading. Bly, Micro's away. Wow, they are very slow. 20 workers, though. During all this, I assume some Banelings got in. 24 drones have gone down. The, the, the critical mass of Hydras is dragged back by the Pariahs. The worker count for Bly is actually in a, in a comfortable state. He's back under 50 here. Because during that fight, he was so focused. Now, the pariahs are able to kill workers. But that was a significant... Yeah. Despite everything, Bly still has an army. Like... Oh! oh why are you so slow? Is that just their normal speed? It looks like there's some sort of bad thing happening to it. I'm not... I can't see if there are any buffs or something, but... Yeah, that Harbinger had a bad day. Bly still maintaining a lot of Hydras here. And he is one of the best low economy Zergs, if not the best. Him and Dark specialize in this, like, low drone count, high spellcaster army. I think the combination of the, the like, I don't know if they're stasis fields, but they're, they're like, prison fields. They can still attack, they just can't move out of it while the unit... It seems to be a channeled ability, though. Those are plus two Banelings. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> Beautiful material computer. <laughs> okay, so plus two Banelings still, still one-shot workers. Good to know. More turrets on the way in that top left. Pariah's getting caught, but dash back. The army's kind of boiled down to uh, the Paragons with their orbs, the Paradoxes with their fancy abilities. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. We've seen them a couple times, but the Viper drags one in. Nothing to do about it. I don't know if there's any real counter to the Vipers, at least directly. The Vipers make it very difficult to maintain this air army. The Paragon's doing a lot of damage, but Parasitic Bomb... Difficult to dodge and Bly. Neural Parasite! Look at me! I'm the Chiron now! And he just turns it against him. Oh! Well, Bly ends up playing Chiron to end the game. I'm not sure if it was required, but it definitely was doing it in style. He turns the units against each other and cleans them up. I was hoping he would use the orbs, but I don't know if he's ever actually played it and knows the keys. <laughs> um, but yeah, wow. Very interesting game. We got one more to look at as well. Um, on Berlingrod is another one. So probably, like, it's actually really close. And that's super cool to see, like... I think part of it is is both players 
Alex obviously understands how to play Chiron, but Bly is overall, like, Bly is one of the best players. So while Alex is a grandmaster and may understand Chiron, the interesting thing is, instead of what you might expect from, like, a lot of these custom mods have the issue of just being outright too powerful. Like, let's just give everything a nuke, right? Like, I don't what if workers mine twice as fast? Actually, in my experience with Scion, there are some things that just feel downright weak. Like, there's a lot of upgrades to get, um, but a lot of the units only make sense in, in certain scenarios. I do, like, there are a lot of ground options that Alex was not using uh, against that air toss army. I'm not sure if that's because he, he thinks the air is better or if he's just more familiar with it. But we'll see. Um, this was from a series of games they played. I'm not going to be showing all of them, but because uh, I want to just give you some highlights here. But I wonder if Bly... I, it's like, oh, it's an air you now I can kill it with vipers, right? I, he didn't seem to really change up his game plan, except he didn't cheese. I guess that's the difference. Um, is he didn't go for any early shenanigans that he usually prefers to do. But otherwise, like, pretty standard. He played it like he was up against Sky Toss, except there weren't really any storms or anything underneath, so. So the material converters, they do, they do build like SCVs. There can only be one builder. I thought at first you could maybe, like, slap a couple in the whatever the warp pool or thingy it is. The Silver Surfer um, hot tub that the the warping in of units is. But, uh, no. Only one, one MC at a time. Two's a crowd. And also it'd probably create some balance issues. There's a warping of a vault, which does have that anti-air and can be used for poking and prodding the overlords back to the pervert pillar. Pew pew. <coughs> oh god. Choking. Oh, a sanctum. The sanctum, I think the closest equivalent would be a robotics. Um, the sanctum unlocks the laser crabs, the pulsars. And which we didn't really see much of, one of my favorites. Uh, and suppressors, which are a more anti air focused unit. And then the reliquary is your forge, which also unlocks another part of the tech tree. Meanwhile, Bly just doing his thing. We got we got queens, we got a roach warren. I think the roach warren is because he's he's suspicious. Ah, citadel's upgraded as well. Nope, that's still a wall. There's walling off. It is Zerg. Like, you don't want Zerglings in your base. That would be bad. Doesn't really matter what race you're playing and what universe. Gets the Pulsar as well. Another Sanctum in the main. Ah, double Sanctum! How... Inspired. I. This means I think more pulsars will be warped in. Yeah, he's he's hiding them in the main, and then he's essentially denying scouting with the vaults. If Bly doesn't go for Overlord speed, he won't see the double sanctum plays, A.K.A. the the crab march. Plus one Chiron ground attack is in production as well. Yeah. Oh, a little awkward here, but the vaults will protect. Overlord. Oh, oh no, the select all army panic. Like, oh no. Fly. Nope. Ah. <laughs> the crab slips away. Did he see it? I mean, at this point, it's pretty suspicious. No matter what you're looking for. That he's so actively trying to kill the overlord. So... We'll have to see. Bly's already building roaches. Like, it, it, something's coming. He knows. It's it's quite clear there's something being hidden here. 
Well, out come a whole bunch of volts. What does the army look like? He's got 12 volts, 6 pulsars, and a suppressor. Up against just roaches and zerglings. And I can be very honest in saying I have no idea if that's enough, way too much, or way too little. Like, <laughs> but there's only one way to find out. Well, here comes the army. It looks scary. The pulsars attack while moving with those fancy lasers, but they're quite fragile on their own. They get pretty easily surrounded. The zerglings able to get a wrap around here. Another target fire on the pulsars. The volts themselves are very easy for the roaches to kill. And the zerglings closing the distance. Pulsars targeting roaches mostly. So, it looks like this will end up incredibly even. Like... They're able to burn through some drones, but they them, like, it, it, it was pretty good. It wasn't, it wasn't a game-ending attack, but Bly's only on 40 drones. So, if Bly hadn't started building units that early, oh, another attack of similar scope here. As there's been constant converter production behind it, Alex has a better economy as he's researching Convergence, which is Superstorm, for a unit called the Meridian, which we should be seeing soon. They look like, um, essentially they look like a weird version of Phoenix on the walker thing, like when he's in Dragoon mode, except they have energy, and they can also cast Magic Missile, I mean Lightning Bolt, which is effectively Magic Missile. The Pulsars? I'm not sure which unit should be tanking for which. Those are actually sub- oh, I'm not- not suppressors, I'm sorry. Subjectors. I apologize. I misspoke. And Bly is struggling to deal with this. Just a tanky army. Yeah, they obviously don't do that much to the roaches, but there's so much of them. Has he warped in any of the, uh, meridians yet? I believe- nope, he's warping in subjectors now. The roaches should be able to close this out. They should be able to get enough damage on the volts. But, I don't know, maybe the subjector's enough. Not anymore. The volts will get taken out. Another wave being built up. You can only warp in at home. There we go. Ah, oh, yes. Hello. Very weird. <laughs> it does have an auto attack as well, so it doesn't just go wandering into the fray. Convergence already done also has access for, I believe, 75 energy to the Lightning Bolt, which is a more Chain Lightning style ability. <clears throat> Bly's only at 50 drones, but he's in his comfort zone here. We'll see if the Chiron army is enough. It's, all right, it's got plus one attack, and of course it has all these fancy things. Oh, the Subjector's not going to stop this for long. Some Warpins in the Mineral Line. Oh, but the Roach is in the third as well. Any workers there are pretty much forfeit. Easily killed. The Roaches get chased into the main. Well, splitting off some army. The worker counts are starting to tilt the other direction. Alex having trouble dealing with the standard Roach run by. Roaches kill the third as well. Oh, he uses the lightning bolts, but they aren't enough to turn the tides. Another round of volts warped in. 22 converters down as Bly just with the simplest but most effective of strategies, which is your basic run by. What do we have here? Elysium, another Meridian producer. The Volt, I believe that's a damage upgrade. I'm not 100%. What do we got? We apparently don't have tooltips. Jimmy! I thought I was just dumb. Their weapon can bounce to an additional target and deal two spell damage. So it, that means it goes through armor uh, as it does spell damage. Oh, burrow move roaches. I don't think there's any detection here. I don't think he even has a, uh, a conduit, a.k.a. Stargate. So this, which is the only easy way to warp in things, they're not that costly, but they're going to cost a lot right now. As the roaches in the main will unburrow and start working on the minerals. Meanwhile, back at home, near full energy. Well, not, not that close to full energy. A lot of energy on the meridians. Meanwhile, the roaches, yeah, there's nothing that really deals with them. 
Burrow move was a great choice here. And the roach is just slipping and sliding by. No detection for Alex means this is going to be a struggle to deal with. He's doing damage at the front. The army has enough to drive back the Roach Ravager, but the corrosive vials are landing! A couple lightning bolts coming out. Not enough to really... Uh, he gets the third! Well, Bly does have an, an alternative third now. The Meridian's costly units to lose. Meanwhile, the Roach is still going to work. Volts eh, eventually cleaning up, but the Meridian's... Ah! No, he pops a lightning bolt, does a lot of return fire damage there, but the most expensive units picked off, and it looks like Bly just taking advantage of having units in two places at one time. They don't start with much energy, so until they get it. Yeah, and I, I don't see uh, the conduit. How does he have detection? He saw the roaches somehow. Is there a turret? I'm not. Well, maybe one of these units is a detector and I'm dumb. I think the Meridian ability might detect when activated. It has another one. It has another ability. It's got a lot going on. It has like a burning, burning eyes ability. When you set your eyes on fire, you can see roaches underground. That's how it works. It's just science. Watch out! Oh my god! Oh, it one-shots, because Volts only have 20-35. Corrosive Lyle does 60 damage. So... It looks like Bly through the, um... Just... At, at this point, like... There's been... It was a great attempt out of Alex. It's just clear Bly is able to keep track of everything a little bit better here. And it is kind of crazy how much it feels like, like, clearly Bly is a little more, uh, he's, he's the better player here. Alex knows what he's about. He's got the right units, but Bly was able to through sheer macro. And a, a bit, a bit of flavorful multitasking. He's in a very good position, unless there's a delete all the roaches button I don't know about. But I don't think so. Yeah, struggling is Alex. Oh, the, the corrosive bile is very dangerous. And it's just too much. The Chiron overcome by the power of the roaches. Just not enough damage. Some lightning bolts popping ravagers, but... The critical mass of roaches. He's run out of workers and Nexi. Well, I'm sorry. Citadels. And no detection. We'll cap things off. Uses the burning eyes. But can he see that he's lost the game? All right, Alex. Well, I, actually, the vaults are pretty good against the roaches. I think they outrange them slightly as well. Uh, 60, 60 drones is not a huge amount, but it's enough. It's enough. Yes, and, and to be clear, as we wrap this up, Scion is an extension mod. I think there might be arcade matches. There's a Discord channel. There's, uh, and you can play it against their, the AI actually works for it as well. You can play with or against the races in a custom match with the Scion extension mod. So you can play today. Unfortunately, as you can see here, it requires something resembling actual StarCraft skills. So that is a turnoff for a lot of people, I know, especially the ones watching this. Um, but you can give it a shot. And it actually stacks up pretty evenly here against your standard StarCraft races, which is quite an achievement in and of itself. Very interesting and very cool. Uh, if you guys want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that. I know there are other places to find some videos on it as well. But if this is interesting to you, make sure to let me know. I think it's really cool. And it looks and sounds great. Like it's, it's such a cool combination of 
None of the races feel like they're an alternate version of any normal StarCraft race, but they somehow feel like they're all three. Um, each one has its own kind of distinct look, but they all have mechanics that are slightly... It's, a, it's an alternate... It's a arguably better universe, StarCraft. As there is a Terran and Protoss and Zerg-themed race. But maybe we'll see more soon. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Stay tuned.